What's up, sweaties? It's episode 153. You're watching Collider Heroes. I'm John Schnepp. We're going to get into it today. It's going to be fun. You know who's joining me? Right over here. It's Robert Meyer Burnett. Well, hello. It's good to be here on, on Surprise Day. That's right. It is Surprise Day. It's a very fun day. It's comic book, comic book day. It's pull list day. We got Amy Dallin right here. Surprise comics. Good That's to be here. Best day of the week. <laughs> That's right. It certainly is. It's the middle of the week, and we're just going to get into it. You know what? We're going to get into a topic today. Digital or physical comic books. We have digital comic books now that have, you know, Comixology, you can order these comics and just digitally have them on your phone or your, or, or your, you know, or your, uh, your pad, whatever you're using, your notepad, digital notepad, or you can go to comic book stores or other stores and get paperback, physical copies, floppies, trade paperbacks, hardcovers. I mean, the choice is now obviously up to you how you wanna read comic books. Um, as we keep moving forward in advancing technology, we're seeing the slow death of a lot of things, not just malls, not just bookstores, not just closures of comic book stores because people aren't going and buying comics as much as they used to, but we're seeing a transformative effort happening within the digital world. So I'm bringing up the subject to kind of open up the, the topic. What, what do we see in the next few years as far as physical, is it physical versus media or can they work together, Amy? Y'all watch this show. So you saw me kind of go off on this a couple weeks ago, uh, which is that like I think rather than threatening each other, that digital and paper comics, especially for the immediate future, are incredibly like helpful. Mm -hmm. And I think you can see that partly reflected in the fact that both major companies now offer uh, versions where you can get digital codes as well as uh, paper comics. Not for everything, uh, but Marvel discovered recently when they tried to change their program up and take away the free digital copies, people are very attached to those. Right. There's a sizable chunk of people who are, are uh, really committed. They like to buy the paper one, look through it, but have the digital one on hand to read. Now, not everybody's going to go for the both answer mm -hmm. uh, on this, but I think like the future of paper comics depends less on whether... like. If we're threatened, it'll be because paper stops being a thing. I think until paper stops being a thing, right. paper comics are probably good to go. Um, and the digital, like, digital access can only increase the number of people who are able to read and enjoy comics. Right on, let me ask you this, Robert. Uh, bringing awareness to the medium, how do you see people talking about comic books, physical comics that you have, both of you and I have a big comic book collection of physical comic books that you anytime comb through, read at the drop of a hat or going through a vault of comics and finding. It's, you know, takes a little time other than just calling it up. What are your thoughts on it? Well, here's the thing. I mean, digitally, I can read a lot more comics that I wouldn't necessarily buy. And I can find things I haven't read or the fact that I can carry on a little hard drive an entire run of 300 issues of a of a comic that I can enjoy. For the record, we're talking about legally acquired digital yes, comics. Yes, of course, okay. legally acquired digital comics, which, which I love. But on the other hand, there is also an element of, there's sort of a totemic thing with comics where to be able to hold them to look at, like I, I love panel design, and yeah. pa comic panel design is all based on the shape of an actual comic. I mean, with digital comics, you could theoretically have com a one-page could be oblong. I sure. could be. It could be whatever you wanted it to be in the digital space. But I, I because I grew up with them, I like looking at a, a comic book page. I like turning the anticipation of what's the next page going to look like, and how does one panel go into the next? And like when Alan Moore did Watchmen, I think it's issue five that it's the same panel designed back to front. Mm -hmm. Fearful symmetry is the issue. Yep. I mean, that was an incredible use of the actual physical medium of comics. So I like them both. I mean, now that I'm going through like finding all my mylar bag comics from the 80s they're still shiny and pretty and i take them out like wow this is it's like all these comics still have their gloss coat on them right you know and 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 to to, to spread them out like playing cards in front of me i can look at the covers and there is something there is a singular joy to that yeah. it's different but if you just want to experience stories like i like spider-man as a character i'm not going to buy every spider-man comic mm -hmm. but if i want to go back and read the god-awful clone saga to get ready for the better clone saga or whatever <laughs> I want to be able to do that at the click of a of a mouse or or the swipe of a, of a finger. Now that you brought up a good point, so you're talking about covers. Now we're in this world now that the variant covers have come back with a vengeance, where there's like 85 different versions of one comic. There's 10 comic, 10 other comic covers of another comic. There's like almost every comic from the big publishers now has one or two chase covers or variant covers, which means you're basically buying the same comic twice which is basically, I feel like, the fleecing the buyer. I mean, it's like, 
unless you're somebody who's like, hey, I love this cover, or I love this artist, and I like to have that choice, I feel like it's kind of like, look, when you have all your comics and you're looking at them and you, you might have a wall of comic books that you have up and they're like, they're like mini posters. So it's sort of like an ability to display all these different kinds of comics. Not that many people do that. How, do, how are the comic book stores going to get in, into making this transition? You have physical comic book stores right now. How are they going to be able to transform with our culture that as, as our culture as a whole, the entire globe is getting rid of physical media? Stores are closing. Everything is transforming into this kind of a different world that what we all grew up with. And when I say we all grew up with, I mean everyone. Technology has changed so much so that even people like me and Robert and Amy, there's a decade or so of difference between our ages, but we are experiencing the same kind of change because of technology's leaps and growths just in communication and digital in digital delivery systems. How can comic books grow? I've talked about this multiple times on the show. I feel like Bridging, bridging that gap between physical and digital media, comic book stores need to be able to give the, 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 the comic book patron, the person who goes to their store, something more than comics, a community vibe, a community feeling, a way that you can, you can meet up with your other friends who read comics. I love to use Kick-Ass as a way to look at a way to do a, a comic book store have some coffee and a little place where you serve like some pastries or something and some chairs where other nerds can hang out and you can meet other people because what's missing from this, the equation, which I love to use borders and other places that would have like that coffee shop where you can kind of mill about and, and then hang out and read your comic or read your book or read, look at the different magazines that you bought and have a coffee and meet with friends for lunch or meet with, I mean, that is missing right now from this all digital, like I am inside my small cyber world and everything is digital. It's like, you're missing the human interaction and if we don't have that kind of human interaction it's going to get crazy it's going to get lonelier and it's going to get creepy and that's what's going to happen to all of society so i want to open it up to both of you i'll start with you robert what are ways that we can bridge that gap between physical media and should comic book stores adapt well yeah look everybody needs to adapt it, 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 you can't be some iconoclastic individual and say i know i just want things the way they were that's not the world. The world is in a constant state of change and a constant state of flux, and we're we're getting incredible, incredible wonders as far as technology and digital sharing and communications technology. But for comic book stores to remain relevant, like any brick and mortar shops these days, they have to offer something that is goes beyond what it is you're just buying there. Mm -hmm. And uh, look, comic book stores have always provided that for me at least, when I was a kid, I would go talk to people behind the counter. I would talk to people that I would meet there. I like comic book stores because they don't, they offer apparel. Mm -hmm. I can buy logo t-shirts, or I can buy action figures, or I can buy whatever. The problem is, comic book stores can't compete with people like Amazon who can offer half price, you know. Right. But I patronize comic book stores, or I'll go to local bookstores simply to patronize them as just, because I think they should exist. I don't like the idea, Amazon's great, I love it, I love it since the beginning, but the idea that I can't even go to a record store anymore and Amoeba is being is gonna disappear in Los Angeles mm -hmm. and this little hole in the wall record stores, but Amoeba has everything. I love walking in there, it's like, it's my happy place because mm -hmm. everything I want's right there. And comic book stores I think should foster that. Look, when people are no longer talking to each other because we're looking at screens all the time, a place where you can actually converse with another human being is a great place. Like, bring in beers and bring in coffee and bring in whatever. I mean, but then, you know, the health department comes in and there's all these other <laughs> yeah. insurance concerns, Don't which I understand. your customers. Yes, but I mean, still, House of Secrets is a great social place to go. Okay. And let's hope it stays that way. Speaking of House of Secrets, Amy, what are your thoughts on bridging the gap, digital, physical? These are a ton of really good questions. And I, I've said this before, uh, only half joking, but in a sense, like, comic books are much less threatened uh, than other media were by the transition to digital because we made, we actually accidentally shed our mass audience decades ago. Uh, we've been surviving on hardcore niche uh, fandom for quite a long right. time. And, you know, the problem with, like, records still had their mass fandom, or CDs did when, when the digital transition happened. Books still had their sort of mass fandom when the transition happened, and it, it became difficult. Uh, comics were already being supported by people who were there out of love and dedication. Um, now. That's part of the reason that I see like digital as such a wonderful opportunity because not everybody has a space they can get to, uh, not everybody has access to a comic book store, uh, and now everybody can have uh, access to these works that make you fall in love with comics. But I, I do think like 
comic books, as you've said, have always, always, always also been social spaces. Uh, if you don't have a store near you, you can get to a convention to have that experience. Um, but stores are great. Like you can have signings and events and community parties. Many stores will also have gaming or also have food or sort of double it up in that way. Uh, and like there's there's always going to be some per or there for the foreseeable future. There's always going to be some. Uh, times that you just want to go in, browse, and pick out a birthday present for someone uh, without, like, you know, until Amazon's literally half an hour delivery from your house. Right. Um, I don't know. I think I think we're okay in the short term. Like, comic sales for the last couple of years have been pretty good. Uh, individual companies may rise and fall, but, like, the market, I think, is still growing, and digital's a great opportunity for that. Well, we're going to get back to this subject in the later <laughs> months. I mean, we're, gonna, we're never going to not talk about this because it's always evolving and changing. I hope to see a couple of stores, like the store in Philadelphia that opened up a, co a coffee comic book combo store. I want to see more stores like that happening all across the planet, let alone L.A. Let's start here. Let's get one happening here in Los Angeles. Let's go to our pull list, our top five pull list this week. Starting out with number five, we've got Dark Side Special number one. It's Mark Avanier and Scott Collins. As a tribute to the 100th year of Jack Kirby, why not talk about the new god's big villain who's basically been brought in to be the Justice League's big villain of the new gods of Apocalypse, Dark Side. Here is uh, Mark Avanier, who's been Jack Kirby's scribe for many years, busting out a special. Number four, we've got James Bond Money Penny. number one. Jody Hauser and Jacob Edgar are doing what I can't wait to read, a special on Money Penny, And this is fantastic. It's the new version of Money Penny. Loving that. Movies. Um, number three, we've got Infamous Iron Man, number 11. It's Brian Michael Bendis and Alex Maleev. You know, those guys did an incredible Daredevil run with an amazing Alex Ross cover. Alex Ross is just killing it with these Spider-Man covers. All of his covers are great, always. Number two, we've got Black Magic, Greg Rucka and Nicola Scott, creator-owned Magic coming at you. Uh, pick it up if you haven't gotten a chance to read it. And finally, number one, we've got All-Star Batman, Scott Snyder and Raphael Albuquerque. Uh, with look at that cover alone, is, you should pick it up. I mean, especially if you're a cover person, we we're talking about sometimes covers, you're just like, oh my God, you don't even know what's in the comic and you're just drawn to the comic because of the beautiful art. Those top five, what are your guys' thoughts on those top five? And if you have a pick of your own, what are your thoughts? Well, on I that? want all of those. <laughs> First of all, I mean, did you notice on the dark side cover? There's an OMAC. OMAC is that an OMAC it, story with Steve Rude drawing it, dude? I, I, I mean, come Bam. on. I, when I was a kid, like I, I remember, there was a 20 cent OMAC comic, which is one of the first comics, and because OMAC was one man army corps, and that's I'm like, right. that's just badass. Yeah, he's I got a mohawk. A, yeah, I'm gonna grow up and be a one man army corps. You know, before Yondu had his mohawk. That's right. He has brother eye in the sky, uh, I mean, baby. I, I loved OMAC, even though it was weird. I mean, yeah. it was like, how does this fit in the DC universe? But uh, the, all four of these comics, I want. I think they're great. And and the fact, I you know, when we went comic book shopping, that was the first time I was aware of this new Bond series. I haven't. I don't know how That's I missed right. it. it. And this true. is part of the same that say I love. I went and got the rest of them. They're great. I, I'm really excited about this Money Penny comic. I think it's. And remember, in the Craig movies, Money Penny was a, a former agent before she became totally. You know, M's secretary. Excited to see what Hauser has gotten store story wise. Amy, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, I'm I'm excited for all of these. Uh, Money Penny, Jody's a buddy of mine, and I'm very excited for her to sink her teeth into the James Bond universe. Uh, Can you give me a be, signed copy. Uh, I might be able to reach. Right. Probably yeah. swing it. Oh, okay. uh, and I'm I'm really excited for Black Magic to come back. If y'all haven't read this one yet. Uh, you, you hopefully have heard us say that Greg Rucka is an amazing writer. He's one of my favorites of all time. Uh, he writes a bunch of, he, he's written, like, the main character of Black Magic is a cop with a supernatural secret. And there's a whole very beautiful mythology they've developed for this, like, Pacific Northwest setting. Uh, and it's sort of all of these things that Rucka kind of specializes in, which is awesome lady heroes, cops, and, like, deep mythology. Uh, and Nicola Scott, uh, who is a delightful human, is also absurdly talented. Mm -hmm. If you heard us freaking out, uh, Rucka and Nicola Scott just came off of doing the flashback stories for year one for Wonder Woman. Uh, and they're, they're just... It, they're just incredible. They're an incredible team, and this book is coming back from break now. They're, they're done with that, uh, and you you would be remiss not to be picking this one up. She's been on yeah. the show. Yeah, Nicola Scott. Special shout out to Nicola she's Scott. She's aw awesome. She's yeah. just awesome. She's yeah. awesome on social media. She's an awesome artist. Super I just talented. love her. It is unfair to be that talented yeah. and that nice. And you know what is Aussie. fair though? Pick up Black Magic. Don't be <laughs> wasting that that time and that money on other stuff. Black Magic. Definitely be picking up All Star Batman. Scott Snyder is kind of an undefeated champ right now on Batman. He keeps saying. I'm 
tired, but they can't keep getting more of those Batman stories and they keep winning. I so. wish DC would sell that as a neon sign that you could buy, like for your home bar. They might possibly be selling that because that is a poster right there. That just looks cool. So let's get into our graphic novel suggestion this week. It is Thor Omnibus by Walt Simonson. I've talked about this a couple times. Oh. I mean, Robert's talked about it. Amy's talked about it. It is the Thor Omnibus. We've got Thor, Beta Ray Bill, Loki, Malekith, Surtur, Hela, Odin. You might not have heard all these characters, but guess what? You're going to be hearing about them because they're all in Thor Ragnarok. That's right, the movie that's coming out where you have Planet Hulk meets Thor Omnibus. This entire storyline with Surtur is what kind of kicked off Walt Simonson's run, this amazing magical 80s run with this character out in the cosmos just banging away like creating a blacksmith you don't know who he is all you see is doom doom and that happened over issue after issue while beta ray bill became thor and you're like what the hell's going on donald blake doesn't exist anymore all these incredible changes that have happened that just now that just you just take it for uh, granted shout out for the to the fact that uh various other people have had the power of thor and that is part of the beautiful rich tapestry of thor history totally Throwing i mean that in there. thor was a frog for <laughs> christ's sake i mean that was in walt simonson's run too thor Thor is a woman right now. I mean, so there's like all these kinds of people who've played Thor, but this series I think is one of the, the best series since Stanley and Jack Kirby had tapped Thor in the first place and made this Norse mythology a Marvel mythology by bringing in that cosmic Kirby flavor. That's what makes the Thor Marvel version completely different. That's why Thor Ragnarok is off the hook because everything that Taika has taken visually is a cue from Kirby land. Robert? I, I can't recommend this highly enough. I mean, I love these Marvel omnibuses so much. Uh, the, the, a lot, sometimes the coloring, the recoloring might be a little too bright, but this stuff looks fantastic. Mm. And I, I just, to hold, you know what it is? It's the weight. When you, and this is a big omnibus. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you're holding it, the actual weight itself adds to the experience because they feel important. You know, and, and this, I love the Simonson run when it was originally coming out in the early 80s. And mm -hmm. I, it's such a definitive run for me. It is sort of my definitive Thor because yep. that's when I was really getting into it. And uh, it's so great. Yeah. Get it. Get this. Yeah. Thor, it's, it's a little pricey. Get find it's like a hundred dollar on yes, yeah, like 125. You can find it depending you know. if this one's in print. They also like don't pay crazy secondary market prices for it because they'll probably eventually find make another version of this if this one's out of print right now. Yeah. And there's other just look for Thor by Walter Simonson and yeah. you'll be in good hands. And that is our show for this week. Definitely check out comic book shopping. I've done it with a lot of different people. Robert Meyer Burnett's on the show this week. We've got an amazing guest, uh, Michael Giacchino. He is an incredible musician, score master. He's done so many scores that I can't even begin to name all of them. He did like Alias, he did all of the J.J. Abrams TV shows. He's done Rogue One. He's got Battle for, uh, for the Planet of the Apes. I mean, it is amazing. When you look at his scores that he's done, wait till you see what a sweaty this guy is too. He's just a true comic book sweaty and a fan of all comic books. So it was great to be on the show with him. Check it out. It's on now. It's, a, it's on right now so you can see it. Let me thank my guest, Robert. Where can we find you? You can find me on uh, Twitter at Burnett RM. Find me on Instagram at RM Burnett or find me on Facebook at Robert Meyer Burnett. And remember, if you're not a Russian hotbot, contact me. Bam. Amy Dallin, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me all over the internet at EnthusiAmy. And you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, just at John Schnapp. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.